Hi, it's Summer Math. Easy. So we're going to discuss the mean value theorem and look at a simple proof, basically illustrate what it is. Basically, uh, let's start off with uh, the definition of it. Let's say you have a function uh, y equals f of x, and then the, these the following conditions are true. Let's say uh, one f, f is uh, continuous on the closed interval a and b. Closed interval, it, it just means you have to include a and b uh, and, and whatnot. Doesn't really matter too much, but uh, anyways, uh, so now, <clears throat> and also the condition two is f is differentiable on uh, open interval a and b. This just means that uh, you have to do derivative everywhere between these two, except open means it doesn't have to include a and b, so uh, derivative at these points don't have to exist, but the value here has to exist, f there. So then if this is true, then what this states is that you'll have a number such that, uh, you'll have a number c such that the f prime of c I mean, uh, the derivative of c is equal to, just equal to f of b minus f of a over b over a, which this is just the average slope of uh, the interval, between the interval. Yeah, between uh, a and b, so that's all it is. It's saying that you have, you have a number such that the, it's going to be the average slope at here. Uh, so to illustrate this one, uh, you can just see by the drawing it, like if you were to draw this out, it, the proof seems obvious, but I'll I'll, show, I'll s do a concrete proof of it soon. Let's say you have a fun just a random function like this. Let's say this is um, a here, and this is uh, b here. Let's say it goes something like this, and this is f of a, this is f of b, and let's say this slope, because remember this is uh, just rise of a run. This one, uh, yeah, this is. So th this slope right here, this one is just equal to, let's just call this, uh, this one is m, m is slope or whatnot, and this is f of b, and this is f of a. So all it's saying is that this slope, which is just f of b minus f of a divided by b a, you know, I just moved it over here, so that's just the slope of this line here. All it's saying is that and you'll have a point C, let's say somewhere around here, this is C where that it has the exact same slope as the average, as the total average one between the interval, and this one would be f of C, and this would, would equal the same thing. And this is uh, similar to Rolle's theorem, which I showed before, if f a and f b was equal to each other, so if f a equals f of b, this is just a part of uh, Rolle's theorem, which I showed in my earlier video. And in this case, you'll in this case you'll just have a function. Let's say this is b, this is a. If they're equal to each other, and you have a function like this, this average slope is zero. Thus, this this slope right here, f of c, is equal to zero. So now, um, yeah, to uh, illustrate, it, well, also if you have another function, let's say, it kind of goes like this. If it goes something like this, and and whatnot. This actually would have, um, if this is, again, the average slope, you'll actually have three of them. Three similar, uh, three average slopes here. This would be f of uh, c1, this is f of c2, I guess, 2, and then this is uh, derivative of c3. And these ones all equal the average slope of this one. And let's call m for slope. Okay, so now to prove this, well, we'll just uh, have to draw this over again. Let's say you have uh, the x and y axis here. We're going to draw a function f of x similar to the one we had above. So let's call this one, this, this is the point a here. And this function, let's say, looks just some general one like this. Okay. And this is b. So then this, uh, let's, let's draw a line straight from here to, to B. So let's call this point A. This is uh, F of X. And this is B. So now if we write the equation of a, um, a line here, let's just write this as a, let's call this one uh, Y, just an equation of a line. So then for this one here, the equation of this line is just equal to, well, we know the slope is just equal to m. Um, you know, the equation of the line is equal to y equals mx plus b. But you could also uh, rewrite it in just in terms of the uh, the slope here. Yeah, this is a quick, well, let's say we had x is over here. 
let's say this is x right here. So then this one, this point here, this is on the equation of the line, we could just write uh, slope is equal to, well, the change between uh, rise over run. So we could just go like, if this is x, this is y, this point is y. We could just go y minus, um, let's say right here, you know, y minus f of a here, and uh, in this case, f of a is just um, this value right here. This one would be f of a. Let's just write f of a. So this is this is the rise here, f, y minus f of a divided by well x minus a. This is the the run here. This is x minus a. This is y minus a. This is, is going to be negative, but we'll, we'll just put it in general. So anyway, so we have y minus f of a right here and then the slope we know is just the average slope of this one this would just equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a now, this is just a quick way of solving for the equation of a line you could just do it this way as well but then you have to solve for b so we have this equation of a line right here so we just rearrange this we'll have y minus f of a is equal to f of b minus f of a all over b over a then this one is times x minus a. Let's put a times here. Yeah, thus our equation of a line is equal to, we'll just move this over there, f of a plus, uh, this is the slope, times x minus a. Yeah. So this is similar to our y equals mx plus b, but in this case we have an x minus a, so that's why f of a is over here, and it's not, because number b is supposed to be the y-intercept. Well, anyways, this is a different way of writing it. So now let's define another function. Let's say from, if this is f of x right here, let's say this function right here, we'll call this h of x, which is the difference between f of x minus uh, the y line. Let's call this one, uh, this is the y of the line. This is the y of x line, let's put an l for line. And then this whole thing right here, this is f of x. So then this difference in height, this one is just equal to h of x equal to f of x minus uh, y of x is the, of the line that we just uh, derived here. So now, if we just write that out, we know h of x equals to f of x minus uh, y, let's, this is, let's call this an l, y line. And then we just plug this in here, so this is gonna be f of x minus f of a minus, yeah, minus the slope times x minus a, so this is h of x right here. And now from here we could apply Rolle's theorem because as you can see right here, x is a continuous function here. This is, uh, yeah, it, there's no breaks in it as you can see. And it also at from a to b, h is just zero here. So you have zero from here and zero here. It's also differentiable because well this is just a, a polynomial. This y is just the equation of a line and f of x is continuous already so and differentiable. So that this one is uh, differentiable and continuous. We could use Rolle's theorem here. And we could, uh, well, we could verify that uh, h of x equals 0 at a. So let's just say at a, at, uh, e well, x equals a, we'll have h of a is equal to, well, this is f of a minus f of a. Yeah, uh, minus slope. I just put m for this because I, I didn't want to write it all out. And then, so this is f a minus f a 0. This is a minus a 0. So this one's equal to 0. And then at b, um, we have h of b is equal to f of b minus f of a minus yeah minus uh, f of b well then there's minus plus f of a so I'm running out of room there I'm running out of room there I'll just write it over here minus f of b minus f of a this is um bracket f of a and this one is b minus a. So then these cancel right here, and this one is in brackets, obviously. So we're going to have f of b minus f of a minus f b of minus f a. This is just 0. So we have h of a equals h of b equals 0. So then by Rolle's theorem, they're both differentiable and continuous, then we know that there's a number such that f of, uh, well, in this case, it's y. I mean, yeah, in this case, it's h. So we know there's a number h of c is equal to zero. So then we could just plug this inside here. Well, first we have to do a derivative right here. So we know this is h of x right here. If we take the derivative, we're just gonna be left, well, this just goes to zero. This 
will be like this. So then the derivative, we take it of h of x. This just equals 2, well, f of x prime uh, minus the, the slope because uh, this derivative just goes away. Yeah, this, this, this is just the derivative here of, the, of this part right here. So we'll have minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So then there's a point that equals 0 right here. So equals 0. There's a, there's a c. Actually, this is, we'll write this one after. Thus, uh, at c, we get h prime of c is equal to 0 equals f of x minus f of b. Yeah, f of, uh, so just equals slope here, f of b minus f of a uh, divided by b minus a. Then if you rearrange this one, we get, actually I forgot to put c in here. Let's put a c right there. So if we rearrange this one, we get f of c is equal to, uh, yeah, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So there's our uh, proof right there. This is, uh, yeah, the one we just had right up there. This is just the mean value theorem. Yeah, because this, this number here is just uh, the, yeah, the average slope here, or the mean value, mean slope, or whatnot. So f of b minus f of a over b of a. This is just what we had uh, stated up, up above. And so all, all this is saying is that the difference between the line, uh, the average slope, and the function is uh, the, that f if you make that into a function using rolls theorem, we get this. So basically, when that is at its maximum, or when uh, yeah, it's a local max in this case, or minimum, if it was a different function. Yeah, so basically, as you can see here, I went, this is this one. So if we go back to this uh, drawing right here, this is kind of like rotating into here. So this is just rolls theorem, but rotated. So if you rotate it this way, you get something like that, and that's just that uh, always always parallel. So this is always parallel. Well, uh, that's all for today. Uh, I'm gonna n next time I'm gonna do a video on some examples using the mean value theorem and how it's useful and also uh, some uh, pretty useful examples and whatnot. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully, you get your head around this one. It's pretty obvious once you just look at the image here and and how the equation of the line works and whatnot. So it's it's pretty obvious. There's a lot of writing, but it's uh, hopefully you get it. Well, that's all for today, and uh, stay tuned for another math easy solution.